In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Vire Stove and the Vire Mini. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to point out that I paid for the original Vire Stove myself. However, Vire did send me the Mini for testing and review, and I did not pay for this one. I also want to point out that I'm receiving no other form of compensation from the company. All right, let's begin. Now, what I want to do is take you down to the tabletop. We're going to go over the specifications for the stove. We'll go over the assembly of the stove. We're going to go over how it's used with wood and two alternative fuels that I found work well on the stove. And then of course, we're gonna get outside and do some testing. All right, we'll do things a little differently in this video than I normally do when I review a stove. Normally, I would bring the stove in in its package and show you what it comes with and then how the stove together goes together. Then I would go over the specifications. This time, I'm gonna go over the specifications for each of the two stoves, and then we'll break down the assembly. And the reason being is there are a few things about the assembly that I wanna point out and explain. It's gonna take a little longer than it normally would. So we'll start with the Vire original stove. We'll go over the, the specifications now. So the stove comes in at 12 inches from the base right up to the top, which is 30.5 centimeters. In the, this dimension from the feed port to the back of the chimney, it is 10 and one quarter inches, which is 26 centimeters. Across the chimney, and because it is a square, it would be the same across the feed port. We have three and one quarter inches, which is 8.1 centimeters. Total weight for this stove is three pounds or 1,363 grams. All right, let's put the Vire Originals aside and bring in the Vire Mini. Now, and you can see it appears, and it, for the most part, it is just a shrunk down version of the original Vire stove. So let's go over the specifications for the Vire Mini. So height from here to the top of the chimney is nine inches or 22.5 centimeters. The width from the feed port to the back of the chimney is seven and five eighths inches, which is 19.5 centimeters. And again, it is three and one quarter inches square across the chimney and across the feed port. The Vire Mini shaves a whole pound off the weight of the other stove coming in at two pounds. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll unassemble the stoves, put them back in their packages, and then we'll start up by the assembling of the stove. And I'll show you what I mean about a few things that I need to explain. All right, we're gonna start with assembling the original Vire rocket stove. And this is how it came to me in this nylon pouch. Now it is a reasonable quality Kadura type nylon, not super high quality, but very good and should last a good long time. And of course there's the website on the back of the package. So let's take a look inside. Held closed with Velcro and a fold over flap. Inside is the stove itself, pretty much one piece complete with the exception of the pot stands, which are in a pocket on the front of the package. Also a little bit of literature did come with the stove showing the assembly and some other information. We'll put the package aside. Now one of the things about the Vire stove that makes it unique and quite attractive in terms of something you may want to consider is this is quite unique in the fact that it is a collapsible folding rocket stove and I don't know too many others on the market and this is actually quite well executed with a couple of things that I want to point out now. So the first thing you do by begin is fold. So the stove actually folds in half in the middle. You can lay it out flat like this and then fold up the two halves like this and then bring them together. And it's pretty much that simple with a few small things. And this is what I want to point out can be a bit of a challenge. Now, I'll, I'll tell you when I first got the stove, it was much easier to assemble than I find it is now. So you can see I've had a number of burns on the stove and there has been some minor warping. I say minor because it's not operating or affecting the operation of the stove or the function of the stove in any way, but it does have a slight effect on the assembly. So let me show you what that's all about. So, bit of a close-up, as close as I can bring it to you anyway. Right here on the chimney portion of the stove are two pieces of metal that are side by side that have a narrow slot and that's true for both sides. That slot is intended to line up with the two edges on the feed ramp side and then slide together. So it, it's not only, it holds the stove shut in that respect, but it also lines up the chimney to the feed ramp. 
So what has happened ha over, over time is I'm getting a little warping on these walls right here. I can actually feel it with my fingers. Not dramatic, just a little bit. So they have come out of true and there's a little warp in them. So when I go to line them up with those two slots, it can be a bit of a challenge to get both of them done at the same time. Usually there's a little bit of manipulation required of the two sides. Did I get it? Not quite. I missed one side. So sometimes it helps just to... There, I got it that time. Yeah, all right. So now that the slots are lined up, the last thing you need to do to keep it closed is there is this flip over latching bar. And I'll point out this in a minute because there's something about that I want to point out. And then the last thing to put it in operation are these two legs. Now, the first time you look at these, you go, how do they work? <laughs> Simple. Just fold them out. Just that easy. Just fold them out. You get used to it very quickly and it sets up like this. All right, so there is the stove ready to operate plus the crossbars. I know you can't see them assembled in the, the way the camera is lined up right now, but I will be showing you those in a minute. And they go onto the top of the chimney and they assist well, obviously with the wider pots and pans that you may use depending on you know what, what it is you're using. All right, so what can I say about the stove? I'll have to disassemble it partially to show you some of the features internally to the stove so you get a better idea of its operation. But what I want to show you right here is this is the feed ramp. So the feed ramp is wide open at most of that three and a quarter inches, at least in this dimension. Here is a ramp itself inside of the feed ramp that lifts the fuel off of the bottom floor of it to allow air to travel down, down through the feed ramp underneath the fuel. That's quite common to most rocket stove design. So it allows air to enter in down to the base. And you'll see in a second when I open up the fire grate inside, and then the air can come up from underneath the fire grate to feed the fire, because that's where it's concentrated. The fire is only concentrated right in this area. All right, the other thing I want to show you about the feed ramp is it does have a cover on it. What's nice about the cover is you really want most of the air traveling in through that bottom portion. So once you've got some fuel inside, you flip the cover over and then air is forced to go in through that bottom uh, ramp affair here to get into the fire chamber and it becomes much more efficient. Truth is a lot of the time I have the flap open because I'm feeding longer sticks in longer than the, the feed ramp it is itself. But if you have some shorter sticks or you've got enough in there and now you just want to you know concentrate the fire where it should be, you flip that over and and it uh, forces the uh, flow down there. Now, good time to point out this small thing. It's small, it's not a deal breaker, but it was a slight annoyance for me. Right here, this little blind nut, which has a small screw stud behind it, is what that lever latches onto. Uh, it was functional, it works. My issue with it is the nut itself is loose. It's not fixed. It's not a stud. It's just a loose little nut and it will come right off of the little screw stud underneath it. And I want, I will be fixing that down with some type of a high heat epoxy to keep it from uh, being lost. But that's my issue is it could quite easily become lost. Now it won't change anything. That'll still lock down. It's just a small thing. I'm wondering why did they bother doing it this way? I will tell you, I did speak with the company or exchanged emails. By the way, if I haven't mentioned this, this is designed and produced in Israel, so it's quite an interesting uh, place for a stove like this to come from. Um, I asked them why they did that, and they said they recognize it's an issue. They're working to rectify it. I cannot tell you at the time of this video if that's been fixed. I'm not an engineer. It's, to me, it's just a simple fix, just a blind stud of some type that doesn't have any screw adjustment. As long as this can reach down and latch over the, the stud itself, it's going to function just the way you want it to. All right, so that's a small picky thing, not a deal breaker, but just one of those issues you look at and say, why do they do it that way? The rest of the construction of the stove is, you know, excellent. It is all folded metal, so it's very simple in construction. You look at it, you do see some machining in some areas where it looks a little less refined than some other stoves, but it's nothing that's that will affect the performance. In fact, when you put it together and you look at it like this, you, you don't see most of any of those machining issues. So uh, again, small stuff. Now, here's what I want to point out. So I do have to take the stove apart to show you this. 
that feed ramp that feeds in from the top and the air is allowed to go underneath, there's the fire grate where the feed ramp ends right in the bottom of the chimney. So that's where your wood will sit when, it, when it's inside and uh, that's where the fire will be. It'll be isolated, or should be, and it is in the stove, isolated to this immediate area and of course whatever flames are rising up the chimney. All right, I'm gonna put this stove aside rather than struggle with it on camera <laughs> to get it back together. And it's not a struggle, folks. I don't wanna misrepresent it. It's just a bit of a challenge lining it up and uh, yeah, it takes a second. So let me just put that aside for a second because I wanna bring in the mini. All right, so here's the Mini, and the Mini is in a very, very similar package, the same basic design, uh, everything pretty much the same, and uh, I wanted to assemble this for you because it has some of the same quirks going together, but it has one small improvement that I'm hoping will will uh, be added to the regular fire stove, at some, maybe already. So there are the crossbars. I'm gonna come back and speak about those in a moment. So let's put the package aside. So the mini works very much the same way. Fold it open, fold it up, and bring it back together. Now, the improvement that I mentioned is right down here. These are the two bars I showed you on the full-size fire stove, but in this stove, right at the base here, a piece of the outer one is sliced off, exposing the inner one. Same on both sides. And what I have found, I can only assume that it was intentional, is that it helps line up the straighter sides of the feed ramp so that I can see what I'm doing and it's easier to guide them together. Still not as easy as maybe it could be, but as you can see, like I said before, it's not a deal breaker, but it is one of those, why do they do it that way things. All right, so it's, they're lined up and together, same flip over latch bar, and there's a good example there. Okay, the blind nut had screwed itself in a little, in a little tighter, making it more of a challenge to get the locking bar down. Uh, same difference, or same thing with the legs, the legs fold out and down they go. Okay, so it looks almost identical in every way to the regular virus stove. Here's a few small things that I picked up. Usually when you put the stove together, you flip the feed port cover over to keep it out of the way while you're operating it, which is fine on the virus stove. On the Vire Mini though, it is now difficult. I can't get it to flip back over. A little hack here, a little hint. Have the thing flipped over as you assemble it because it's almost impossible to, well, it is impossible to get, well, all right, I was able to get it. Uh, pull it up and over. It, what it did is it put, pried the stove slightly apart just to flip that over. Uh, small thing, right? It is just a small thing. And again, not a deal breaker, just one of those things you'll look at it and say, why did they design it that way? And again, it doesn't uh, fun, uh, make any difference to the function or operation of the stove but this does, and this is different. So in scaling down the Vire Stove Regular to the Vire Stove Mini, they made a few changes which actually work against the design, only slight. So in the full-size Vire Stove, it is really pretty much a true rocket stove. Now, not complete. I know people who know rocket stoves will say, Mark, that's not a rocket stove. And they're right, it doesn't meet all the criteria. And I'll explain the criteria of a rocket stove as I understand them in a moment. This one does sacrifice some of that criteria for compactness. And uh, one of the things that has happened in changing the design is airflow has been compromised a slight bit at the top up here. So I guess the easiest way is to bring in the full size wire and then I can show you that in comparison. All right, I do have to adjust the camera slightly here so you can see both at the same time. Okay, so as you can see, the Vire Stove Original, which I'm in the back here, is taller and wider, of course, than the Vire Mini. And here's where they compromised a little bit. If you look at the crenellation, the cutout here at the top of the stove, it has a certain depth, and I think it's just about one full inch. I could measure that, but it's about one inch depth here. And when you add the crossbars to that, they, of course, sit flush right at the very top and they have the width that they need for a larger pot on top. So you get a fair amount of ventilation, sufficient amount of ventilation at the top here. 
However, what happened is in, in scaling down the mini, they actually cut some of the ventilation off the top. So now this crenellation, this dip here is only a half inch and it does make a difference, a huge difference. In fact, if you have watched my preview videos, you'll see that this stove has a tendency to smoke when a pot is put on top of it because it starts to dampen airflow to the point where it, uh, well, it uh, reduces airflow to the point where it smokes. So uh, I wasn't too happy about that, and but the hack, the fix, is very easy. And I spoke to the company about this as well. So what's the hack or the fix for this one? If you have the Mini and you're experiencing smoking, take your crossbars off, turn them upside down, and now you have that full one inch height. Now, yes, they're not sitting in the notches that they should be sitting in, but you're back to that one full inch height that you want to get all the airflow and exhaust room at the top of the chimney. So when I spoke to the company, they were aware of that, and what they were doing, at least in the short term, is shipping them with the pot stands for the larger stove, because that also, with the, with the, the crossbars in the notches, is back to that full one inch. So you get all the exhaust room now that you had in the full size. So I don't know if in new productions they've also deepened the crenellations, that would be a good thing for them to do, but at least you have crossbars that fit, that provide the height that you need to get the airflow out of the stove. Uh, so let's talk about rocket stove design very, very quickly. So the basic principle of a rocket stove, not uh, unknown to most people, is that it's a chimney. The chimney effect, when you have flame being drawn up a tall cylinder, in this case, square tube, then it's going to draw air in so that it rushes up and you get a very clean and quite full combustion of the wood. There are a few things that affect that. Obviously, the taller the chimney to a point, to, uh, the taller the chimney, the more the chimney effect kicks in, the more of a rocket stove it becomes. There is a ratio for the dimensions of the diameter, or in this case, cross section of the chimney and its height that comes to a peak efficiency. Another part of it is a feed ramp. Most of the time, it's at a bit of an angle. That angle is providing two things. It's providing the ability for wood to kind of self-feed inwards as it slides down and the wood at the bottom is consumed. With that ramp I mentioned under a few minutes ago where air can flow in underneath the wood and the combustion is limited to right here, right, right where the fire grate is. It doesn't run back up the chimney or up the uh, feed ramp because the air wants to preferentially flow in and flow up. It should not, you should not have smoke backing its way out of the feed ramp. If you do, then you haven't got the ratio correct and it's not going to uh, burn as efficiently and some of the flame is going to start running back up the feed ramp. The other characteristic of a rocket stove, and I mention this now because I'll, it's important to what I'll have to say in a few minutes time about the performance of the stove, is that most rocket stoves are encased in some type of insulation. If you look at a lot of them on, on the market, they are huge e e affairs of cement or some type of an insulative around a central a chimney and a feed port down at the bottom. Uh, yes, I've seen a lot of welded pipe ones which are, look more like this than, than that, but if you don't have insulation around the chimney, well, you, so you'll see a lot of flame coming up through the top, but you lose a lot of heat out of the sides. It just radiates off the side of it. Honestly, it doesn't make much of a difference during the summer. I found that it really does not impair the performance, but it does make a huge difference in the winter. I did test another rocket stove design, which I could not even bring water to a boil with in zero degrees Celsius temperatures, and that was a big disappointment. This will work. This being made of steel to start, start with helps. This having the size, which is critical to the, to the uh, amount of heat that you can generate where it helps, but it still slows down considerably in the winter, the boil times. It'll still work. It just takes longer and consumes more fuel. And that's one of the things I, why I waited this long to do the review is I just wanted to see what cold weather will do to it. So once again, it's not a deal breaker. You just have to be aware that you're going to lose performance over the winter with a rocket stove that does not have an insulated chimney. 
All right, so those are the basic design differences and the basic similarities between the two stoves, as well as having pointed out some of the small quirks. Now, there are a few things, and this is more of a construction thing and attention to detail than anything else. And again, not deal breakers. It's just one of those things you look at it and say, that could have been done a little bit better or maybe a little bit differently. So there are gaps in the stoves. One of the gaps, hopefully I can show you this, is right in here where the feed wrap meets the chimney. And it's an uneven gap opening more to one side than the other. Uh, it, again, it's not a big deal. Just be aware that there are gaps. There are gaps at the bottom right down where it hits the the, the, uh, the ground or the whatever surface you have it on. And that's true of both stoves. Interestingly, the Mini, the gap doesn't exist at that meeting point, but it does exist larger down here. And it's a little larger on one side than it is the other. Why? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's just the way that the stoves were produced. It really, again, does not seem to have any significant effect on the stove. What can I say about long-term durability? So I've had, I think, 12, maybe 13 fires in this stove, and it has, it's held up well. That minor warping aside and the discoloration you expect to see, I've had maybe a little fewer, uh, a couple less fires in this stove, maybe eight to 10 fires. And again, uh, the same thing, less warping in this stove. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it is just smaller and the heat, it, you know, some of the dimensions are smaller. But, and again, the warping was not significant. Here's what I wanna say about the Mini when compared to the full-size stove. Once again, I'll put the full-size stove behind it. The Mini is not a rocket stove. It cannot be considered a rocket stove. And the reason is its dimensions don't work the same to, to function like a rocket stove. The chimney, although it has the same width or cross section, is shorter by three inches. Same goes for the feed wrap. Um, it has some of the chimney effects because it is still nine inches, so that's you know quite tall. So you still get some of the chimney effect. It still preferentially wants to draw air in through the feed port most of the time. What I mean by that, I have is without changing the crossbars to that taller position, put a pot on, saw that it gets smoky as it dampens the airflow, and had smoke backward, come backward out of the feed ramp. And you don't want to see that with a rocket stove. Uh, it's improved now that the, you that they have the taller crossbars or that you flip the one the original ones if that's what you have but I still don't consider up to the same performance of the full size wire having said that the smaller one works much better during the winter because there's not as much chimney for you to lose heat out of you're that much closer to the source of the flame because of the shorter chimney all right Let's get, well, okay, before we go outside, I guess what I should do is talk about alternative use of fuels. All right, for the longest time in playing with these two stoves, I considered them to be a single fuel stove. I could not figure out how I could use, well, first off, and this is probably where I got stuck, how was I gonna use an alcohol stove with this? And you can't, there, I, there is no realistic way of adding alcohol as an alternative fuel to either of these stoves. So that's just a given, you're not gonna be doing that. And that stopped me from thinking laterally until just recently when I realized, well, what's stopping it from being a wood pellet stove or a charcoal stove? So I tried and it works quite well, which I'll demonstrate, of course, when we get outside. So here's what I did. I tried wood pellets in the larger stove and it's surprisingly effective. I, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, but the flames will easily reach out of the top of the chimney. The, the fire grate that you saw is just about the right size for pellets. And if I pour the fuel in through the feed port, they all rush down to the base. They cover over the fire grate and maybe one or two pellets drop through, but nothing that prevents the stove from being used. Then all I need to do is ignite them from the top like you would any other pellet stove. And it doesn't take long before the air rushing through the pellets really has them engaged in fact, this stove will go through pellets faster than a lot of stoves will and produce a lot of heat. It'll shorten the duration of the burn some, but you'll have a lot of heat for that, for that same time period. So I thought, that's great. Now I can demonstrate this stove is something you can use with wood pellets. What about the other stove? Can you use it with wood pellets? Absolutely, you can for the in the same way because they're so very similar design on the inside. But this stove brought me the idea, why not using charcoal. So these are charcoal 
briquettes of a standard size, and I've said this before, but I prefer to use the chunk charcoal. But I use the briquettes for testing purposes because they are, like I said, a standard size. So 10 briquettes will fit in here very comfortably. I could probably get more, but I like to I put in 10 briquettes, just load them down from the top, and then I get some fire starter of my choice, whatever I'm using and I light it and slide it down underneath the feed ramp where the air is supposed to go until it gets to the bottom of the fire burn chamber and then lights the briquettes from underneath. Takes a few minutes for them to engage, but once that air starts drawing in through the feed ramp and up the chimney, then the charcoal briquettes will produce a lot of heat. So it's nice to know that you have alternatives to using wood. I know these are primarily wood stoves, that's what I'll use them the most of the time, but it's nice to have those two alternatives and we'll, well, I'll demonstrate and we'll show you how well they work. So, let's get these stoves outside. 